In this video, we're going to consider the scatter plot. The plots we have considered up to now have been two-dimensional, but they show a univariate data vector on a 2D plot. The scatter plot, however, shows two univariate vectors of data plotted against each other on a 2D plot. A scatter plot is created by plotting the first entry from the vectors. One of the values is shown on the x-axis and the other is on the y-axis. Then we go to the second entry and find the intersection of its values on the x and y axes, and so on. These vectors must, of course, be of equal length. Here is a plot then of vapor pressure shown on one axis and plotted against temperature on the other axis. Chemical engineers know that in general, the vapor pressure of a species in a distillation column will decrease as temperature increases. This is confirmed in this particular plot, which shows data from an oil and gas company in Canada. But notice how scattered the data are. There's measurement error in both variables. It is not the smooth line that is predicted from theory. Scatter plots compel the reader to infer a cause and effect relationship between the variables plotted. In this case, increasing temperature, the cause, will lead to a decrease in vapor pressure, the effect. Now take a look at this scatter plot though. The x-axis shows the number of white hairs on a person's head. The y-axis shows the bone mineral density, BMD. People with low BMD are prone to higher rates of bone fracture, as their bones are more fragile. Pause the video and answer this question. Is there a cause and effect relationship here? The answer is clearly not. If there were a relationship, we could improve a person's bone mineral density by simply coloring their hair. White hairs don't cause low BMD, and low BMD does not cause white hairs either. What we are observing here is simply a correlation between two variables. There is a third variable which is not shown, that is the person's age. As people get older, the number of white hairs increase. As people get older, their bone mineral density decreases. That third variable, age, is a hidden variable, not shown here on the plots. We have to understand our system to discover it. That was a simple example, but in your career as an engineer, you will be tricked many times by hidden variables. You will plot a scatter plot between two variables and notice a trend, and think that you've discovered an interesting cause and effect relationship. But always ask yourself, could it be something else causing this? We will come back to this important topic at the end of the course when we look at experiments. Experiments are the ultimate way to prove cause and effect. Experiments will break these correlations which would have otherwise tricked us. Here is another correlation. The number of hours worked per week shown on the x-axis and the y-axis is the GDP per person, a measure of productivity. Note that the word engaged here on the x-axis is used in the British English sense and not in the sense of marriage. The linked article provides a fascinating explanation as to the cause and effect relationships shown here on the scatter plot. Scatter plots are a great tool to reduce data ink. To start with, they show two variables on two axes. To improve data ink on a scatter plot, make your axes fit the data tightly. Look back at all three scatter plots shown. You don't have to start your axis at zero, but that's the default in many software tools and you'll often have to change it. A good software tool such as R has sensible defaults built in by researchers and designers that study these topics. I find I almost never have to adjust my R plots. Also, avoid heavy grid lines. The human eye is remarkably good at imputing horizontal and vertical lines where none actually exist. Scatter plots are a tool that we are comfortable with as scientists and engineers. However, we often believe that others are not capable of understanding and reading these plots. The evidence for that statement is that we so seldom see these plots in operator control rooms and reports that engineers write for managers and other non-engineers. This is unfortunate. Edward Tufte has studied the media of Western newspapers and found almost no scatter plots are used. Japanese newspapers, on the other hand, use several. This is unusual because it's been shown that 12-year-olds and older understand how to read and interpret such scatter plots. A university education is not required. 
To illustrate this, take a diversion and watch this video by Hans Rosling from a BBC recording he made a few years ago. Notice in his video the use of scatter plots. Not only two variables though, he uses the size of the marker to illustrate a third variable, and the color of the marker is a fourth categorical variable. So that's four dimensions on a 2D plot. Then when he animates the graph through history, time now becomes a fifth dimension. If you had virtual reality 3D glasses, you could add a sixth dimension with X, Y, and Z axes. Could this be a tool that engineers and operators use to better understand and control their processes? Here's the link for the video. Please watch it and then come back. So to end off this video, let's address a shortcoming of scatter plots. We can lose the ability to tell the density of each of the variables, especially if points on the plot overlap. But there are interesting ways to overcome this. On the left is a scatter plot showing data from 21,000 people. It illustrates their education level on the x-axis plotted against their vocabulary level. Notice that the points overlap, and we don't get an indication that there's 21,000 data points here. But if we add a little bit of noise, statisticians call this process jittering, then the density in the data become more apparent. Another way we can recover the density of the data is by adding box plots outside the axes, as shown here. Alternatively, histograms can work just as well. So that's all the material for the visualization module. There are so many other topics we could have covered. This area has been rapidly evolving over the past 10 years. Many blogs and visualization websites have been started. This was an active area of research in the 1960s, and it's been revived again. 30 years ago, it was difficult to plot good data. But these days, we have excellent software tools that are freely available. Unfortunately, many of you will still encounter these legacy plots and tools in the workplace. Good plots are not difficult to create, but it does take time and careful thought about what you can remove and add to the plot to help get your message across.